Good morning. I just turned on the video and I have like this uh, in my gut, like this, uh, like, I don't know, like uh, scared or something, like something came up. I don't know why. It doesn't have to do with what I, you know, with uh, being in front of the camera. It has to do with what I want to say. Like I'm, I was coming to say that today's a good day. It's the best I've had in a few days. I caught up this morning on a really good note on the right foot, getting into this house on the right foot. Yesterday uh, was the second night that we slept here, and all uh, my all of my boys came, and uh, even my my uh, oldest son who lives he lives about an hour and a half away, and he came and he just crashed on the on the couch, and that was really nice, feeling like uh, he had a place to come and crash at his Emma's house, his mama's house. And my youngest son had a friend over. So this is going to work. So this morning I decided, see, and that's giving me fear. I feel like this, this fear come up, like, what are you going to do? But, you know, just connecting to that, how fun it's going to be. I'll tell a little bit about what I've been going through the last few days. I've been kind of just... I don't know. I don't. I don't know. I. I just. I just pushed through it. I was crying half the days the last few days, just in total, like frozen, frozen in place. Like I can't do anything. It's just happening, and I can't. You know, I may. I'm allowing it to happen. Kind of. I'm kind of making it happen. Kind of allowing it to happen. And it's just. Uh, and the whole time holding my head in fear, like what's going to happen, what's going to happen, and pushing through the fear, like this is going to happen. And there's a certain time that you, a certain place and time that you get to that you just quit thinking, you just have to act. And that, feel, that, that feels like where I'm at right now. There's so many things I can do, I can do, I can do. And now's the time to just do. Now is the time to just do. So I have a game plan. I'm going to go in there and I'm going to sit and I'm going to do and and I'm whatever. See, right now I'm doing this. This is what I'm doing. But I've been doing since I got up this morning. While the boys were getting ready, I was just doing things, just doing, just moving, 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 not sitting there holding my head or not sitting there waiting for them to leave. I was just in action while they're getting ready, You're doing dishes. Uh, I took the dogs for a walk uh, before I even, you know, I got, I woke my one son up. He started getting ready. I took the dogs for a walk. I made my coffee. I made sandwiches. I uh, cleaned up. I put a load in, a load of laundry in, you know, just moving, moving, moving. And I have like this work that I set out on the table last night that I'm going to get to. So that's already waiting for me. Um, I'm making this video. I'm going to start uploading it and then I'm going to start doing some graphics. I'm going to put it a notice in, you know, just moving. Um, the graphics that I'm working on are my own project that I'm going to be doing, like digital art and selling it on Etsy. And I hope it goes. I mean, digital art I can do. It doesn't cost me anything to make. And it's also, if something gets going with the digital art, then it's uh, passive income because I only have to upload it once. So I'm hoping, I'm just going for it. I'm going for whatever I can go for and just watching as it uh, plays out. I think I've got this first month covered. So the second thing I want to talk about is what happened this week with my twin. So we went somewhere. 
we went to the hot springs together in his car. And on the way back, I went into a total hysteria, paranoia. It was right, it was right in between day one and day two of moving. And I couldn't get anything moved over here. And I just, I couldn't go home. I just couldn't. And I also couldn't drive. I knew I couldn't drive because I was frozen in place. Couldn't move. And so I told him I'm coming because he, because my car was parked at his place. So I told him I'm coming in to, that I'm coming in to, until I can drive. And when we got into, and, and he said, okay. And then he made up this thing. When we got into his house, he started, he has a sense of humor. He's got the sense of humor. It's like, it's, it's, it's such a sense of humor that if you don't get it, you, you're like, you can, you can also be appalled. Like, what, 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 what's that? What's going on? And so he says, I know what we're going to call this evening. He said, it's, uh, Hostage date. Date but Ben Arba. Like being held hostage date. Being held hostage date. Like I came in there and I'm holding him hostage because I won't leave. You see what we put up with? And then... And then I was still, I was like frozen. I couldn't leave. And I also like being next to him. I feel safe when I'm next to him. He doesn't have to do anything. Just being next to him, I feel safe. Like everything's going to be okay. Doesn't matter what he does. I also didn't want to go back to my life. I get dealing with this whole move and what am I going to do and the kids and, and figuring out means and work and all of that. I didn't want to go back into my life and it was in between sleeping here and sleeping at my parents. I didn't know where I wanted to sleep because here it wasn't set up and I really was like, it was late and I was frozen. I couldn't move. And the thought of coming here and having to put, you know, figure out if I brought sheets over or I didn't or whatever. And the bed over there was already made, but I didn't feel like sleeping over there anymore. But anyway, and in the end, he said to me, why are you still here? It was after I fell asleep and then I woke up because he called me. And I woke up, I woke up, and he was sitting on the balcony. I went out and sat next to him. And he said to me, why are you still here? And I didn't know what to say. So I didn't say anything. So he said, come, I'll walk you out. And he walked me out to his car. Walked me out to my car. And I drove home. I don't know how. It was all just kind of like a blur for me. These last few days, this whole moving, I just feel like the whole thing is just this massive blur of like heartache and fear and emotions all over the place. And then I felt like a fool. Like, why did I do that? I should have just left.
And then he made a movie about it. He recorded a movie about it, telling about his hostage date, being held hostage. And then he told about other times that he felt like he was held hostage. And there were pretty tough situations that he felt hostage in. You know, tough situations that I could see how somebody could feel like they couldn't get out of that situation. And then to associate myself with that. And he posted it on Facebook and on YouTube. And there were all sorts of remarks. And it was like, I felt like such a fool. And it also like put me out in a bad light, like, like holding somebody hostage. Like somebody doesn't want to be with me and I forced them. And it hurts and I feel pathetic. But we're connected. So all of that pain is like, I just have to accept it. So whatever he pulls or whatever he does, it affects me. And that's just a given. So the best I can do is just allow, you know, not try to force anything. You just allow him to be so that he can be comfortable so that he won't, so that it won't hurt me. He won't hurt me. That's what I was going to say. But it's not him hurting me. It's me hurting me for overstepping boundaries. And then it puts him off. And then I get hurt. So in order for me not to get hurt, I need to play by, you know, the rules. The rules of, you know, etiquette, 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 etiquette. There's a butterfly. You know, just do the right thing. That's all. Yeah, he didn't invite me to come in. If he wanted to invite me, he could have invited me. And I know how he is. About his own privacy and, and space and, and him getting to his own say. And some of the remarks in Facebook were like, like it made me come out to be like pathetic or crazy. And then I think to myself, him posting that is like sending a really strong message. Like, get out of my life or something. But he's also been in constant touch with me. You know, he'll send me a text today or something and ask how I am and, you know, care. But at the same time, I feel like he cares, but there's like this big, massive wall that he puts up.
There's a bird sitting right above me chirping. Right above me. There it goes. And then to top it all off, right? Like that's not good enough, okay? The next day, now I thought I got everything out of his car and moved it into my car. The next day, he sends me a picture of like, because when we left out of the hot springs, I changed my clothes from the wet clothes and I left my shorts and underwear in his car, I guess, on the floor or something. I didn't know that I did. I didn't mean to. But I I can already hear what he says. So that you, you do the things subconsciously. I don't know. I don't know that I would have wanted to leave my underwear in his car. But I don't even know what underwear they were. You know, that's not something that I really would want to leave in his car for him to see. But the next day, he sends me a picture that he put them on this, like, wall at the hot springs. This is where I put them, like kicking me out of, you know, I don't know. I, 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 I'm actually probably the happiest that he did that and didn't take him and wash him and hang him and, you know, touch my underwear. I'm probably the happiest that that's what he did choose to do with them. He couldn't just leave them in his car. They were wet. They would have rotted. But it's also like sending a message like, Like, don't leave your, don't leave remnants of you with me. One girl in the remarks on Facebook. One girl told about how she was raped and uh, abused by her father. And that was in comparison to the hostage date. I really, like, I can, you know, there's one side of me that says, okay, well, that's good. This, this, this brought some stuff out. It brought people's feelings about it out. And it also shows that, you know, a man can also be held hostage by a woman. I'm going to have to see the humor in this. And I, I'm going to have to just, I'm going to go get busy. I'm going to go get busy. One thing is for sure, it sure did send me into a spiral. Sent me into a spiral. But then he was really sweet because last night he called. I didn't answer because I, I forgot my phone in the car. But then he sent me a text, uh, like a voice message saying that he had called to ask how I was and to see how I was doing and the day after. And I don't know what day after he meant, the day after my big breakdown the day before when I called him making a fool out of myself or the day after he posted that video about me being like a predator. <laughs> I don't know. I'm going to have to start seeing these things as funny because otherwise I just go down to these little loopholes and nothing gets done. So I, 
Yesterday I spent half the day frozen. And so I am going to get busy. Besides, I'm sitting out here on my new balcony looking over the Sea of Galilee. I don't know if you can see it on there. It's kind of a hazy day. It's where the, all that, all this gray is, is the Sea of Galilee. But you're not going to be able to see it today. It's also backwards because uh, I'm filming front forward. There, it's a beautiful view from all around. You know, there's houses all around where I'm sitting. But you know, when you uh, when you kind of ignore that, it's not ignore like in a way of it's like that becomes like your frame. For the view and it also it also like uh i feel secure because i'm i'm all closed in here with that other house so i'll turn around i'm going to show you see so this is my place i'm still fixing up with all my plants and then over there is the balcony that's a little guest house right there over there see those are the mountains i was staring at over there you can see Mara. There's another house. There's no windows right out onto the balcony. Over there, see that is Tsukarbel, that pointy sticking up. That is Arbel Mountain. And down there is Migdal. And, and below that is the Sea of Galilee, but you can't really see it. And over on the horizon, if you can barely see the mountains over there, those are the Golan Heights. And Melande. So, if you have anything to say about that, any kind of insight or anything, then comment in the comments. I love listen, I love hearing comments about what I'm doing. And um, thank you for watching.